Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. This video is going to provide a basic framework for the technique called iontophoresis. Iontophoresis is a method where you can deliver a drug locally and transdermally, which means across the skin. So it's a method of electrodynamic transdermal drug delivery. Now to really get a basic understanding of how this technique works, let's actually take a look at this picture. So I'm going to blow this up right here. All right. So here we have two electrodes that we're placing on the skin. So one of these electrodes has a positive charge. That electrode is called the anode or the anodic electrode. The other electrode has a negative charge. It's the cathode, also called the cathodic electrode. Now, if we think about this logically, if we were to have a positively charged drug and we wanted to deliver it through the skin, which one of these electrodes would we put that positively charged drug on? Would we put it on the cathode? Well, the answer is no, because this electrode has a negative charge. If you stick something, a drug, any molecule that has a positive charge on this, it's just going to stick on that and it won't go anywhere and then your treatment will do no good. So what you do is you look at the drug that you're dealing with, you figure out if it has a negative or a positive charge, and you simply put it on the electrode that has the same charge. So in this example right here, uh, they've got a drug that has a positive charge. So they stick the medication on the electrode that also has a positive charge. Now why does that make sense? Because if you put something that has a positive charge on an electrode that also has a positive charge, like charges repel. And so that means that the positively charged medication or drug is going to move away from this electrode, but it's also going to move toward the other electrode, which has the opposite charge, because opposite charges attract. So the key is, if you put a drug that has a, has a positive charge on the negative electrode, it'll just stick there and won't do anything. Conversely, if you stick a negatively charged drug on the positive electrode, it'll still stick there and it won't do anything. So always look at the drug, figure out if it has a positive or negative charge, and then put it on the electrode that has the same charge. And it will migrate away from that electrode toward the other electrode which it has the opposite charge of. Now, when we look at the movement of this positively charged drug from the positive electrode to the negative electrode, the drug doesn't simply just move across the surface of the skin, rather it's going to penetrate through the skin, uh, go through some of the subcutaneous tissue, and then it'll actually enter local blood vessels. The key is local. If we applied this electrode with the medication over the quadricep in the thigh, it's not going to make its way to the shoulder. Okay? It's just going to be local delivery of this drug. So it goes through the skin into local blood vessels, and then really just in this local area, that drug is going to do whatever it is you want it to do. Okay, So, looking at this, the drug, when you deliver it, it's only going to penetrate a few millimeters. So if you're looking to get a drug into very deep tissues, it's not going to work that well. This is really only for su very superficial tissues, only penetrates a few millimeters. And like I said, it's also a local delivery. So compare that to an intramuscular injection or an oral administration. So what happens in oral administration? So in oral administration, you take a drug by mouth, it goes through the digestive system, and when it gets to probably the small or large intestine, depending, it gets absorbed into the bloodstream. And so there's really no control over where that drug goes. It can go anywhere in the body, pretty much with equal likelihood. Um, fairly similar in an intramuscular injection. You're, of course, injecting uh, a drug into the bloodstream of that muscle. Injecting into a muscle tends to decrease the rate that it goes throughout the body, but again, you can't necessarily control where that drug is going to go. So one of the nice things about this iontophoresis is that if you are dealing with a superficial tissue and you only want uh, the medication to go to that area, this is a good technique to use because it is local delivery and you don't have to worry about the drug going elsewhere. Okay, It's really just going to stay in the area between those two electrodes. Okay, Now, one of the key things here is that the drug has to be able to ionize. Okay, You can't have a drug that has a neutral charge, or even if it ionizes and has a net charge of zero, this will not work. It has to have a net charge, either net positive or net negative. Because if you try to apply an electric field, 
between these two electrodes on a neutral molecule, well, it won't move because if it's electrically neutral, no current is going to force movement of a neutral molecule, so it has to ionize. Now, as we've talked about, if there is a negatively charged drug, you put that medication on the cathode. The cathode is the negatively charged electrode, and that makes sense because if you put a negatively charged drug on a negative electrode, it's going to move away from that electrode, and it's going to move toward the positive one. Now, again, with positively charged drugs, that's what we have up here in this example picture, you place the positive drug on the anode, the positive electrode, and then it migrates transdermally to the cathode. Now, we can see here in this table, we can see some examples of some very commonly used drugs to, with iontophoresis, and we can see their polarity or their charge. So, for example, salicylate. Salicylate has a negative charge. It's used to treat myalgia and scar tissue. Potassium iodide, really the iodide is the important part there. It has a negative charge. That's also used to treat scar tissue. Lidocaine has a positive charge. So to administer lidocaine, we would put the drug on the anode, the positively charged electrode. Now one of them that we're going to see a lot, this is dexamethasone. Now dexamethasone here has a negative charge. Looks like this was crossed out for some reason. But the way that dexamethasone is administered is actually as dexamethasone sodium phosphate. And in this form, it has a negative charge. And this is used to treat inflammation. So for example, inflammation of bursa, so bursitis, inflammation of a tendon, tendonitis. This is probably the most commonly used drug in iontophoresis. Okay? And one important point here, before we go any further to these um, parameters for the setup, is that whatever electrode you put the drug on, that electrode becomes the active electrode. So in this example right here, since the drug was positively charged, it was placed on the positive electrode, the anode. So therefore, the anode is the active electrode. And by default, the other one is the dispersive electrode. However, if we were dealing with dexamethasone, which has a negative charge, we would put that dexamethasone on the cathode, the negatively charged electrode. And so then the cathode would become the active electrode, and then the positive one, the anode, would be the dispersive electrode. So again, whatever electrode you put the drug on, that becomes the active electrode. So it depends on what the charge of the medication is. All right, now let's take a look at some parameters for iontophoresis. And it's important to note these parameters are, look very different than what we would see for some of these other techniques, like if we're looking at TENS and IFC, high voltage pulse stimulation, there we have things like frequency, pulse duration, and later on we'll see things like ramp up, ramp down times. In iontophoresis, we've got a very different set of parameters, as you can see right here. Okay, we've got maximum safe current density as the first one. This is really just the density underneath the electrode. Uh, the density of the current, that is, and this is the maximum that you can use. And these are numbers that you should memorize. So for the cathode, the maximum safe current density is 0 0.5 milliamps. Milliamps, that's the key, per square centimeter. However, for the anode, it's 1.0 milliamp per square centimeter. The reason that for the cathode it's a lower value is because the cathode tends to cause a little bit more irritation. And so because it has the potential for irritation, we use a lower maximum safe current density. Then we have something, this is actually what you would manipulate, would be the intensity. But we have to first know the maximum safe current intensity. So the general formula is maximum safe current density is equal to maximum safe current intensity divided by the surface area of the electrode. So we'll actually look at an example problem on the next slide where we actually calculate the maximum safe current intensity. And then the intensity that you set the machine to cannot exceed this. So for example, if the maximum safe current intensity were calculated as 5 milliamps, you could not set the machine to 6 milliamps. You could set it to 5 milliamps, you could set it to 4, but it could not be higher than 5 milliamps. Couldn't be 5.1. Maximum would be 5. And that's for the safety of the patient. And we also have dosage. Dosage is really just the product of the intensity of the treatment in milliamps and the total duration of the treatment in minutes. So the dosage we have is the milliamps, which is the intensity that you're using, times the total duration of of the treatment. And because we're multiplying milliamp times minutes, uh, the units of dosage are actually going to be milliamp minutes. And usually we're going to say that that dosage should be between 40 and 80 milliamp minutes. Okay, so let's actually look at an example problem here. 
uh, for iontophoresis. So let's suppose we want to deliver dexamethasone transdermally. What is the maximum safe current intensity using an active electrode of six square centimeters? So before diving into this problem, we need to know whether or not dexamethasone is positively or negatively charged. So dexamethasone is actually negatively charged. So either the question will tell you if it's positively or negatively charged, or you'll just have to memorize it. You should memorize that dexamethasone is a negatively charged drug. And I will say this, that um, it's actually administered as dexamethasone sodium phosphate, like you see here. Um, I think sometimes it helps to visualize this. If you look at this molecule, you can see here there's some oxygen atoms on this phosphate that have negative charges. So overall, no other charges on the molecule, two negative charges, so this is definitely a negatively charged molecule. Now I will mention this, that when it does get to tissues, um, eventually it will hydrolyze into its active form, just dexamethasone, as you can see right here. But for now, just understand that this has a negative charge right here on this phosphate moiety. So if it has a negative charge, that means we're going to be placing the drug actually on the cathode because if we stick it on the anode, it's just going to stick on there and it won't go anywhere. We have to put it on the cathode, the negatively charged electrode, so it moves away from that and toward the anode. So hopefully that makes sense. But then we have to remember that the cathode has a maximum safe current density of 0.5 milliamps per square centimeter. So the first thing we need to do is figure out the formula. Well, we know that the maximum safe current density is equal to the maximum safe current intensity divided by the surface area of the electrode. But we can rearrange this by multiplying both sides by that surface area. So we can get that the maximum safe current intensity is equal to the product of the maximum safe current density times that surface area. And so that means that if our cathode is 0.5 milliamp per square centimeter for the maximum density, we just multiply by that six square centimeters right here, and that gives us three milliamps. So that's the maximum safe current intensity that we can use. You would not use four milliamps. That would be contraindicated. You could use one, you could use two, you could use three, but you can't use more than three, okay? Now, how long would the treatment need to last to confer a dosage of, let's say, 60 milliamp minutes? assuming we're treating at that maximum safe current intensity. So we're going to use an intensity of 3 milliamps. We don't have to, but we're going to do that here. Now remember that the dosage can be anywhere between 40 and 80 uh, milliamp minutes, so we're right in that range. That's actually good. So we need to know the formula. Well, dosage is really just the intensity in milliamps times the time of the treatment. So to get the time of the treatment that we'd need, we just take that dosage and divide by milliamps. So we're going to take whatever dosage it is, that's 60 milliamp minutes, and divide by the intensity we're using, which is 3 milliamps. And so when we do that, we get 60 milliamp minutes divided by 3 milliamps. And so that means that in order to get 60 milliamp minutes for the dosage, we'd have to run this treatment for 20 minutes. Okay? And this type of problem, this is really all there is to iontophoresis. Okay? Um, you just need to remember uh, what these maximum safe current densities are, and from that, given the size of the electrode, you should be able to calculate the max safe current intensity, and then just don't exceed that. And then for the dosage, dosage is just a product of the intensity in milliamps times the duration of the treatment in minutes. And so you should be able to manipulate this formula to figure out the time that you need in order to effectively uh, dose the treatment. Okay. Uh, but again, back to this slide right here, kind of a summary slide. All right. If you have a negatively charged drug, you put that on the cathode, and the cathode becomes the active electrode. You have a positively charged drug, you put that on the anode, and the anode becomes the active electrode. In either case, the electrode that does not have the drug, that is the electrode that the drug is migrating toward, that's the dispersive electrode. Okay, And then just remember for the cathode, has a maximum current density. Uh, 0.5 milliamp per square centimeter, and the anode has a maximum uh, safe current density of 1.0 milliamps per square centimeter. Okay, And then for the dosage, that dosage can actually range anywhere between, this is actually a slight misprint, um, between 40 and 80 milliamp minutes, and that's true regardless of which one of these electrodes you're using as the active electrode, so it can be between 40 and 80. And then in general, the duration of the treatment shouldn't last more than 30 minutes. So in this example, are we good? 
yes, we're good because the treatment does not exceed 30 minutes. It's at 20, which is just fine. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of iontophoresis. We'll cover the contraindications and precautions in a separate video where we kind of do that for all of the electrical stimulation techniques. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.